Hey, I've got a bit of an announcement today and I've got several other pieces of information I wanna share with you that I think will be very useful. We'll get started on that now. That's right, we've got a brand new Johnny here. This Johnny's got 1.4 hours on it now. Had one hour on it when we got it a day or two ago. I wanna tell you a little history about this Johnny and maybe a, for those of you that are fairly new with us, a history of all of our Johnnies. Uh, this is our third 1025R. The first one we bought new on our own back in 2014. It was a 2014 model. We kept it for four years basically with, and got to about 400 hours. At that point, we had an opportunity to trade for a 2018 used tractor. And so that's what we've had for the past year on the program. Now we've got this opportunity to trade for a 2019 tractor. It's just a, a little bit different than the other tractors we've had, mainly because it has more standard features. This particular tractor was shown at the Deer Dealer Show in Florida sometime around January, sometime in the, in the beginning of the year. And our dealer, AHW, had a chance to get a hold of it with all these extra options on it. So they made us a great deal to trade for it. So this is our Johnny. It's a 2019 model, as I mentioned. It has many features. We're gonna go over the uh, options that it has on it here in, in just a minute. I do wanna talk just a moment about the serial numbers. Let me read the first portion of the serial number on our tractor. It's 1LV1025RV. That's the same on all 1025 R's that I know of. The next two digits on ours are KK. Well, I'd like to clear up a little confusion on the model year and how you can actually tell what year you're dealing with. The K means 2019. So why are there two K's? Ours is VKK. The first K is the calendar year that the tractor was built. The second K is the model year of the tractor. If you buy a new tractor right now, as of this airing, on your dealer's lot, and they say, hey, this is a brand new 2020 tractor, it will be an LK. It was built in calendar year 2020, but it is a model year 2019. Turns out the model year 2020s don't come out this time until sometime later this summer. As far as I know, there are none of those on dealer lots. We spoke a little about this in our recent Load and Go episode where we talked about the compatibilities and that later there might be compatibility with the Load and Go for, for the 54 inch deck. Well, the reason is, is with the model year 2020s, the AutoConnect system will be changing. It will be using the same AutoConnect system as the 2025R, okay? So there's been confusion because people will say, I have a 2020 model year 1025R, but it doesn't work with this load and go for the 54. Why is that? Well, you don't really have a model year 2020 1025R yet as of this airing, but you have a calendar year built 2020 1025R. So it's not like your dealer misled you, it's just a little confusing in how this goes. So look at both of those digits it's the 10th and 11th digits. If you start with the 1LV1025RV, then that 10th and 11th digit is the calendar year and the model year of the tractor. Okay, so it seems a little strange, right, to not have 2020 model year tractors yet. Well, there's a variety of reasons for that, many of which I don't know. I do know that COVID has delayed these somewhat. I'm, I'm, I'm certain of that. So we won't be seeing model year 2020 1025 hours for at least the early part of the summer. That's gonna to lead to something else I probably should share with you. I mean, sales have just been incredible this year according to the dealers that I have contact with, uh, AHW and others. Because of that, supply issues are running thin. So if you're interested in a subcompact, a 1025R or even up through the, the three series, maybe even the four series, if you're interested in one in this season, I suspect it's time to go get on it because supply issues are, are running thin at this point. Uh, hopefully once the COVID situation works its way through, then the supply will be back to normal, but uh, it's gonna be pretty tight here for the next few months. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the options that are on this tractor. We'll be going through some of these in more detail over time as I learn more about them, uh, learn more about their functionality, but let's just kind of get an overview for now. This machine has the built-in 
third function from deer. Um, it is controlled by a switch here on the lever. They replace the, the ball knob and they replace it with a toggle switch right here. Another thing that I'm not certain of is this lever may be a little bit shorter uh, than on the uh, standard lever. It, it, it feels a little less comfortable to me. I, I kind of want it up higher here. Uh, I think it may be shorter. The third function has two quick connects right at the mid part of the tractor uh, inside the frame. And then those hoses run to another set of disconnects uh, down at the front of the loader. So the plumbing's a little bit different than the diverter kit I've always used before from Artillion. Uh, this third function stays with the tractor all the time. Okay, it is a complete third function, not a diverter kit. So in theory, at least, you can operate the third function while you're raising or curling. It'll be interesting to see if there's enough flow to make that actually effective. We'll talk more about that one later. Let's move on. Lighting, we've got LED lights up here. We've got LED lights down here. I'm not certain yet on the front. I did notice that the front lights are a little bit more yellow than these white ones. Eh, I'm not really impressed with that. It seems like they ought to all be the same color. But maybe we just don't have the LED upgrade for the regular front lights. I'm not sure. In addition, there's a, a, a shield around here. Now, I've always had the Artillion horse blinders. And the reason I like the Artillion horse blinders, the reason I put them on in the first place, was to guard this light from getting into my eyes. Uh, these shields will be tougher, they'll be more solid. The question was, is are they going to get into my eyes? And I can't tell you that from this point. I know that I can certainly see the light here, it's not far enough forward to guide me. What I don't know is if those lights are focused enough, uh, rather than the flood that the, that the uh, regular halogen lights had, I don't know if they're going to bother me at night. It also has the brush guards on the lower light, which is always required to get any of the light kits up here. Above my head, this has got the official deer canopy. This is a permanent mount canopy. The positive of this is that you can go down the road with it. You don't have to take it off when you're going down the road. The negative, at least to me, is that you can't quickly take it off when you need to put the rops down, when you need to work under brush. I'm not necessarily certain if this canopy is going to be for me. Are you going to eat my mic again? Why is it you want to eat my mic? Hmm? What do you think? I got distracted. You need to catch a mouse because so far you're not proving your worth. Martha is catching all the mice and all you're doing is eating up my food. Now on my 2018 model, I always had some trouble with some rattling back here. It, it really bothered me because it was kind of loud. Uh, it appears that they've added a, a mechanism here that I can tighten up maybe and reduce that rattling. Uh, I'll, I'll check into that uh, over time. Maybe I can understand exactly how that works and hopefully we won't have that rattling on this particular machine. Uh, it looks like a good approach. Other than that, I don't see many, if any, design changes on this machine uh, from the 2018 model that I had, and that was my understanding that there really weren't any changes. So the biggest change overall for us is the third function kit. That's really where we're going to see the most difference and where we'll have the most feedback for you going forward. The third function kit is significantly more expensive than the Artillion diverter kit. Uh, I believe it's $1,400. You may have to pay a good bit extra for installation because it's difficult to install. The one that we saw installed, they took all the, the, the right fender here out, essentially tore the tractor all the way down to its frame, uh, and mounted the third function in, and then put it all back together. So it was a lot of work for the dealership to install this option. The benefit is that it's self-contained. It's, it's hidden under the tractor. Uh, one concern that I have, I haven't checked into this too much, but in the one brief look I had, I'm wondering, does it get in the way of that most difficult to find grease fitting under there? It seems like it's mounted up there in a similar location. I'll have to provide more info on that later. You can also respond in the comments if you've got that third function. How does it impact the ability to grease that, that fitting up under there that's already difficult to get to? First impressions on the third function, I like that it's built in. I, I really like that a lot. It, it frees up some of the space around the loader here, but it is a lot more expensive. And I've always had good luck with my Artillion diverter kit. So if, if you've got an existing machine, I think you'd save a good bit of money by sticking with the diverter kit. It, it mounts quickly onto your loader. I've got an installation video on that. Very happy with it. If you're ordering a new machine and you have the money, you probably should consider the third function kit that comes from Deere. 
I'll put a link to that third function kit in the description below, how you can get it at greenpartsstore.com if you want to try to do the install yourself. That'd be pretty brave, but some of you can do it, I know. Okay, this machine came with the regular R4 tires. We will be swapping out the tires for our VersaTurf when I get time. It's gonna be a little more difficult because this one also came with wheel weights. These are the 50 pound weights, I believe. There is an availability for a 72 pound starter weight. Um, if you've got the money when you're buying the tractor, I would recommend the 72 pound starter weight. I would also recommend, and will be getting for myself, some rim guard tire fluid, which adds about 100 pounds per tire. With the exception of mowing your yard, more weight is always better on the rear end of these tractors. Whether you're pulling, whether you're using the loader, stability, almost every reason, uh, with the exception of your yard, more weight is better. And really on my yard, I'm not sure that I've seen much disadvantage with having that extra weight. So I'm a firm believer in adding more weight. Wheel weights, rim guard, when you're using the loader, some major rear ballast in the back. Folks, we didn't need a new tractor at all. Uh, the 2018 1025R was, was in perfect condition as far as I know. It, it, was, it would have been fine for us. Uh, AHW reached out and said they had this machine. It had these extra options on it, including the third function. Uh, I jumped at that because I wanted to try the third function. Again, not disappointed with the Artillion at all. I would highly recommend the Artillion Diverter, but I want to try something different so that I can share my feedback with you over time. That's our goal here, right? And that's the reason we got the 2018 machine was to update to the newer design. There were several design changes there. We're adding this one because of the third function. Who knows if the opportunity comes along, we may try one of the 2020s next year. You never know. Um, but again, it, there was no problem with our other tractor. Uh, AHW has probably got it for sale right now. Um, call them. I imagine you can find it. If you're watching our older episodes and you wonder which 1025R we're actually using in a given episode, you can tell that fairly easily. Let me give you some tips. The, the first one had the H120 loader, which has a straight beam here. This one has a curved beam across the top. You'll see that straight beam on the first 1025R. If we don't have the loader, you can check. Pretty soon after we got that one, we put the wheel weights, the 50 pound plastic coated concrete wheel weights. Uh, they stick out a little bit from the rear tires. You'll see those. They're kind of smooth on the outside. The second tractor you can identify with the huge white and orange stickers on it. Uh, I think Courtney got a little out of control with his stickers. Um, but you can tell that it's got the 120R loader. It does not have any wheel weights. Never had any wheel weights. Um, I think those are the most distinguishing features on that one. With this one, you'll be able to see these rectangular AHW stickers. I guess they're stickers here on the side. You'll also be able to see these 50 pound starter weights. Those are good ways that you can tell which machine uh, that we happen to be using uh, going forward. And uh, I don't intend to confuse you because quite frankly, a 1025R is a 1025R. There's only minor differences. Probably most of you won't care, but I thought some of you might. Here's a change. The bucket level indicator has been moved to the left side. I'm used to it being on the right side. I suspect this was because of the third function hoses being routed in there. They just moved it over here. I don't think there's any difference to the part. You can just rotate the thing and turn it over. So there might even still be room for it over there. Guys, I think the 1025R uh, is an incredibly versatile tractor and an incredible value. Yeah, when I first got my first one, I thought that over $16,000 for a tractor and a mower and a loader was a huge amount of money. I, I was used to spending big box store prices for the little 42 inch jobs. So it seemed really expensive. But the thing is they have so much function. I mean, when I realized all the loader can do, all the three point hitch, the PTO, the, the functionality is absolutely amazing in these things for the price. That's why I have my third one. I, I think these are an incredible value. I would encourage you to look into a subcompact tractor. They're amazing to me what they can do. They won't solve all the world's problems, but for the value, it's, it's absolutely amazing. We're gonna have another episode in a few days, hopefully, where we show some of the differences between the 1025R and the 2038R and hopefully help you make a decision on that. Stay tuned for that one. Meanwhile, I hope you found this episode helpful. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.
I hit Martha with the tractor this week, last week actually, and skinned up his legs pretty bad. I backed over him basically with the 2038R. I heard a squeal, but I didn't even recognize it a cat, so I sat there for a moment and thought, what was that noise? Finally, I thought, I wonder if that was one of our cats. I drove forward a little bit and Martha ran off. He's been kind of laying around most of the time. He's got really skinned up back legs. He can't climb anymore. I think, I think it, he's gonna get better. I don't think there's any serious problem, but I think he's pretty sore in his hind legs. I feel bad for hitting him, but I'm glad we didn't cause any real damage and now he gets out of the way. Mary, unfortunately, the other cat, is still in the way. And I don't know any way to train them to, to get away. It's, they kind of have to learn and thankfully, hopefully no permanent damage here with Martha. He likes to scratch and he just can't get up to, to earn it. He'll be jumping around hopefully in no time.